Hey guys, this is John with The New Division and welcome to another tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate a simple pluck synth. Uh, a pluck synth is going to sound something like this. And these types of synths are really great because you can come up with some uh, really cool patterns with it. Uh, I've made a lot of MIDI in the past with these types of uh, synths. So let's go ahead and hear what one sounds like if I were to play it for you guys. Let me find a preset real quick. That one sounds pretty cool. And here is another one. So that sounds um, pretty simple, really. Nothing too crazy. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the Ableton Arpeggiator so that we can begin with like something fairly basic. And let's just add in a C note and loop this. And then let's go ahead and change uh, the playing style. Actually, let me add a couple other notes real quick so that we can have something a bit more playable. change it to a 16th pattern. And then change this note so that we have another note to play with. And then add one more note. So with this starting point, let's go ahead and get into the sound design. So first things first, uh, we, want to neighbor, uh, we want to enable our filter. And as you know, the filter is what's going to allow us to give our sounds a bit more of that pluckiness. So the first thing we're going to do is play with our envelope 2 modulator. And let's bring this cutoff all the way down. And then let's drag and drop this envelope 2 onto uh, our filter. And let's hear how that sounds. So the sound hasn't really changed a whole lot. So let's go ahead and bring down the sustain to 0. And from there, we're already getting a pretty good starting point for where we want to head into next. Um, let's go ahead and switch this over to uh, the low 24 filter. And then let's bring the modulation on the cutoff a bit down. I think that's a pretty good starting point. Let's bring the decay down a little bit. And then bring this filter up. Now I'm going to bring the release up on the envelope 2 and then on envelope 1 a little bit as well. What that does is it allows us to have the synth kind of open up a bit more naturally when we start opening the filter. And then I'm going to adjust to taste. Yeah, so I think that's a pretty good starting point. I feel like this synth needs another oscillator. Um, and I think I'm going to fine tune it a little bit. So it's uh, slightly detuned from this oscillator A. So let's go ahead and do that. And of course, we always need to uh, click on B so that this one is also being... Uh, it's being filtered as well through the main filter. So let's go ahead and detune it. And actually instead of just having a hard detune, let's go ahead and add an LFO to this. That way we have a bit more of a natural uh, detuning sound where it's kind of going up and down and then bring this rate down a little bit so that it's a bit slower and 
then we're gonna uh, move this random face here a little bit so that it kind of gets rid of that sort of like brassy kind of sound. I kind of want to give it a bit more of a natural synth sound. And then I'm going to bring up the unison to about two and then bring this detuning down. So there I brought it out to seven. I just felt like seven was gonna make it sound a bit more wide and uh, a bit more clear. So let's go ahead and add in some reverb. As you guys know, I love really large reverb. So I'm gonna bring this to about a six on the decay. That's a pretty good start. Um, let's go ahead and add in some chorus to kind of give it a bit more life. And all I'm doing here is I'm going through several different presets that I've made over time. One of the cool things about Serum is that if you do end up with a preset, that you really like for any one of these effects, you can save it and then you can always recall it later. That sounds pretty decent. Let's go ahead and add some delay as well. Let's change the pattern a little bit. Uh, let's do a chord trigger so to hear how that sounds. Like that i think that sounds pretty nice um one thing we can do too in serum and some people aren't aware of this but you can actually change the order of how your effects are being played um you can always play around with having the reverb before the delay and vice versa same thing with the compressor which i'm going to add as well One cool thing about compressors that um, is always good to make sure you're doing is to not really have the compressor sound louder than your actual sound. What that does is it lets you compare your sounds together and not give you sort of a placebo effect where you think that the compressor sounds better just because it's louder. So it's always good to kind of bring the compressor quite a bit lower than your uh, default sound. So uh, I'll show you an example. So as you can hear there, the compressor sounds a lot lower when it's on. So I'm going to bring it up to the same volume as if it were off. And essentially, really, all I'm doing with the compression is sort of just giving these uh, effects behind it a bit more time and punch. Um, it's not always necessary to do this, but it, I, I, you know, for personal uh, sound design, creative effects, I like doing it sometimes. It doesn't always work, you know. Um, it works fine when you're using these types of uh, synths and plucks and stuff like that. If you're doing bass lines, you don't always want to do this because you're going to lose a lot of the dynamic range on the low end, and it can squash things. But if you're doing it with um, a good amount of tastefulness, it can come out really nice. So for the last part, I want to add some EQ. Um, let's bring up the highs a little bit on this plug. And 
And that sounds pretty decent right there. Um, the only other thing that I would maybe do is play around a little bit with the resonance, but I don't think that this sound really needs it, so. thing we can do as well is add a sub oscillator so make sure that you pass that through the filter and then bring this down for a lower octave yeah and I think that sounds pretty decent let's go ahead and try it out with a chord progression that um, could be cool. Let's see how this sounds. Remember, you can always make your sense a little bit more mono using the width. Uh, I like to do one at about zero and the other one at about 70. Just gives it a little bit more centeredness. Doesn't make your sense super wide. So there you have it. That's how to create a very basic pluck sound that can work for chords, it can work for arpeggiated patterns um, it can work in a lot of different genres and um, yeah if you liked this video please leave a comment below and don't forget to subscribe thank you